The story you're about to see is a big, fat lie. No names have been changed to protect anybody. There is no sports league unlike it anywhere in the world, where cartoons and football come together. This is the United States Cartoon Football League, celebrating its 40th anniversary. cartoon and football fans this is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network bringing you the action and highlights of week 11 of the USCFL's 40th anniversary season another two teams have fallen while another two have advanced which two teams got the axe and which two teams are moving on you'll know by the end of this video after a brief pause we will talk about and present the highlights of an interesting Game 21 between the Warner Brothers All-Stars and Team Canada from Edmonton. Me 
Welcome back. In Edmonton Friday night, Team Canada and the Warner Brothers All-Stars squared off for the right to advance to the quarterfinals. But this was a game that was interesting in the fact that it was almost a total shutout. Warner Brothers struck first with a Wiley e. Coyote field goal. But after that, it was all Team Canada and it was the Team Canada show. The scoring spree began with a nine-yard touchdown run by Harold of the Total Drama Series. After a Jonesy Garcia field goal, Izzy found Gwen from 43 yards out to go up 17-3 after the first quarter. Team Canada just kept piling on the points. After another Josie Garcia field goal, Izzy threw her second touchdown pass to back up running back Justin from three yards out. A third Jonesy field goal gave the Canadians a 30-3 halftime lead. The game was essentially over with at halftime, but Team Canada kept on with the scoring with two more Jonesy field goals to go up 36-3 after the third quarter. After Jonesy's sixth field goal, Harold got his second rushing touchdown from four yards out as Team Canada dominated Warner Brothers 46-3. The three points scored by Warner Brothers was the lowest uh, point total scored so far this season. Team Canada right now is the only undefeated team to advance and will go on to the quarterfinals with possible home field advantage while Warner Brothers finishes in 12th place. As for the stats of this lopsided game, beginning with Warner Brothers, Bugs Bunny was 20 of 50 for 214 yards and four interceptions. Daffy Duck carried the ball 19 times for 82 yards. Tight end Marvin the Martian led the receivers with six catches for 88 yards. Babs Bunny of Tiny Toon Adventures led the defense with six tackles and four assists, and Wally Coyote scored the only points of the game with three points. For Team Canada, Izzy went 36 of 50 for 318 yards and two touchdowns. Harold, the player of the game, carried the ball 32 times for 142 yards and two touchdowns. Gwen led the receivers with eight catches for 125 yards and one touchdown. Noah led the defense with four tackles and one assist. And Jonesy Garcia finished with 22 points. And here is how the highlights of this <clears throat> bloodbath looked on screen.
Should Team Canada make it to the Disney Bowl, it will mark the first ever international game for the title in league history. After a brief pause, we will talk about another possible scenario, as well as talk about and present the highlights of a Game 22 overtime thriller between the mo modern cartoon All-Stars and the comic strip All-Stars from Houston. Sugar. Welcome back. Before we continue, here's the scenario I mentioned. Last week, the defending champion Filmation All-Stars defeated the Sci-Fi All-Stars to advance to the quarterfinals. Last night in Houston, the Modern Cartoon All-Stars and the Comic Strip All-Stars were looking to do the same. The Comic Strip All-Stars lost to Filmation in Disney Bowl 3 last year. Should the Comic Strip All-Stars win this game and both teams continue to win, they could play again in Disney Bowl 4. It would mark the first time in league history that the same two teams would play against each other for the league title two times in a row. She-Ra was the game MVP. If she were to win the MVP award, it would also mark the first time ever that the same player won the MVP award two years in a row. Yes, friends, this weekend's games could have proven to have a lot of scenarios. I said could have proven this, but the modern team had other ideas. On a perfect late afternoon, the modern cartoon All-Stars and the comic strip All-Stars played in the second overtime game this season. At first, it looked like another blowout. The modern team scored 17 unanswered points with a Sailor Moon field goal and two rushing touchdowns by backup running back Kenny McCormick of South Park before the comic strip All-Stars ended the shutout as Charlie Brown found Dennis the Menace from 59 yards out. The modern team had a 17-7 halftime lead. In the second half, it would all change. The comic strip All-Stars pulled within three as the Wizard of Id, the game MVP, intercepted a Sonic the Hedgehog pass to run it in from 35 yards out, and it was the only score of the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, Charlie Brown ran the ball in from five yards out to give the comic strips the lead with more than 14 minutes left in the game. Five minutes later, Kenny McCormick ran in ran in the end zone for, for the third time from 11 yards out to retake the lead 24-21 to with more than nine minutes left. On the next drive and pretty much the very next play, Archie Andrews took the ball to the house from 78 yards out, the longest touchdown run so far this season, as the comic strips retook the lead 28-24 to with still more than nine minutes left to play. With under three minutes left, Blondie Bumstead's only field goal extended the lead 31-24. to The modern team was out of timeouts, and when they got the ball back with 139 left to play and 83 yards to try to tie the game, they methodically took the ball down the field, stopping the clock along the way with the receivers catching balls and going out of bounds. With just 28 seconds left, Sonic threw a seven-yard touchdown pass to Linka of the Captain Planet series 
to tie the game and send it into overtime. After both teams tried to score to win the game, the modern team ended the extra period with a Sonic to Knuckles touchdown pass from 54 yards out as the modern team won 37 to 31. The modern team will advance to the quarterfinals while the Disney Bowl runners up are eliminated and finishes in 11th place. As for the stats in this game, beginning with the modern team, Sonic the Hedgehog finished 29 of 52 for 372 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Kyle Broflowski of South Park carried the ball 35 times for 171 yards, and a shout out to his friend Kenny McCormick as he rushed for 91 yards on 17 carries and three touchdowns all without him getting killed. Darn those bastards. Knuckles led the receivers with five catches for 131 yards and the game-winning touchdown. Mavis of Hotel Transylvania led the defense with five tackles and four assists, and Sailor Moon finished with seven points. For the comic strips, Charlie Brown went 14 of 34 for 167 yards one touchdown, and two interceptions. He also rushed for 50 yards on six carries and one rushing touchdown. Archie Andrews carried the ball 36 times for 224 yards and one touchdown. Dennis the Menace led the receivers with two catches for 80 yards and one touchdown. Dick Tracy led the defense with seven tackles, four assists, and three sacks. The Wizard of Id, the game MVP, went, went, had two tackles, six assists, one interception, and the pick six he had in the third quarter. Bonnie Bumstead also finished with seven points. And here is how the highlights of this exciting game looked on screen.
Like what we did in the first overtime game, we showed you in its entirety the game-winning drive in this one. After one final pause, we will preview the last two games of round three along with the answer to last week's trivia question and this week's question. Welcome back. Now for the answer to last week's trivia question. We asked which actress of Charlie's Angels was originally named Sherry Moore, who sung the Chase songs on Josie and the Pussycats. If you guess Cheryl Ladd, you are right. Cheryl Ladd was born in 1951 with the real name Cheryl Jean Stuppelmore, S-T-O-O-P-E-L, M-O-O-R. It was shortened to Sherry Moore when she started out in show business. After she married David Ladd, son of Hollywood legend Alan Ladd in 1973, and after she divorced in 1980, she reverted her first name back to Cheryl and kept the Ladd surname as her own. Now for this week's trivia question. However, this is more like a quiz. Before we ask the question, take a look at the following chart. The category for this question is the USCFL turns 40, film at 11. The degree of difficulty is all-star. These shows had characters who are newscasters doing local news. The question is what are the channel numbers these shows turn to for news? Remember, we are looking for the channel numbers, not the newscasters. We'll have the answer for you next week. And that's it for week 11 of the USCFL's 40th anniversary season. Join us next week for the conclusion of round three as we will talk about and present the highlights of game 23 between the DC Comics All-Stars and the Disney All-Stars from Orlando, Florida and game 24 between the Nickelodeon All-Stars and the Fox All-Stars from Charlotte, North Carolina. Only 10 teams remain. Who will fall next? Find out Sunday. And until next Sunday, this is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network wishing you peace. Take care and stay safe. we went round and round, each time could miss, we'd steal a kiss while the merry-go-round went... The merry-go-round broke down and made the darndest sound. The lights went low, we both said, oh, and the merry-go-round went.